the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the fourth day of the Thanksgiving and Praise Conference. I would like to begin today's reflection with an admonition. And it is this. Finish the year with joy and enter the next year with joy. Finish the year with joy oh, and enter the next year with joy. Oh. I'm serious. Finish the year with joy. Look, I, I, I know that this year has been one with missed experiences. A lot has happened. Some of us have lost our loved ones. Different types of and different levels of hardships have come knocking on our doors. Some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us have been betrayed. Some of us have had haircuts on our investment portfolios. Some of us have had very awkward, painful experiences. It's been a year with missed experiences. Look, so many things have happened that can prevent us from seeing the faithfulness and the goodness of God. So many things. If, if you want to begin to count them, so many things have happened that can prevent us from seeing the faithfulness and the goodness of God. But I'm admonishing you in the name of God to, to, to go beyond your pain, to go beyond your challenges, to go beyond your losses and be joyful. I'm admonishing you to go beyond seven and step into the eighth dimension. Okay. Let me use some 13 to illustrate a point. Some 13. I read. How long, Lord? How long, Lord? How long, Lord? Will you forget me forever? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day I keep having sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemies triumph over me? How long? Look on and answer me, O oh Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I may end up sleeping in death and my enemies will say that they have overcome me and my foes will rejoice. Because I've fallen. But I trust in your unfailing love, and my heart rejoices in your salvation, and I'll sing your praise for you have been good to me. Psalm 13 is what I just read. Now, you are Bible students. Here is a person communicating a lamentation. It's a lamentation is communicating. Things were not working well for this one. Like the way things didn't work well for some of us. Our goals and prayer intentions that we set out to achieve since January and the year is about ending and it looks like there is no show. No show. So, the psalmist sustains a lamentation like some of you. And in his lamentation, he's saying, Lord, how long? Will you forget me forever? How long would you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts day after day with a lot of sorrow and sadness in my heart? How long would my enemies keep triumphing over me? Are you not going to answer me, oh God? Would you give light to my eyes? You want me to sleep in death so that my enemies will say they have overcome me and my foes will rejoice that I have fallen? This was someone who was sustaining a lamentation in Psalm 13. It was a tough season for him. And it looks like there is no hope. And it looks like everywhere he turns, there is trouble, one after the other. So he prays this prayer. Like this man, there are many of you who at this point in time say that there is no reason to give God thanks because 
too many bad things have happened you've lost your loved ones you've lost many things expectations were cut short so what is the point of giving thanks so the psalmist prays to god and he is expressing his frustrations in the lamentation oh lord how long will you forget me forever forever just like the way some of you talk to god when you are alone you know people can become so frustrated and they can begin to talk to god anyhow and later on when they realize it they will say that they are sorry and this happened to job it can happen to the best of us job lost everything he went through pain he lost influence he became the object of mockery he was reduced to ashes to the extent that his own very wife told him curse god and die and job spoke to god god how long will you forget me i'm in trouble how long how long 10 years 20 years 30 years how long will you cover your face look my dear friends see eh? in every region in every region they are conspirators they are limiting spirit whose very assignment is to make sure that people do not rise in life so so they look at you and they say okay say you're a child of god let's see how you make progress those are conspirators and and and, and limiting spirit let's see how you make progress and and they say and they, they they program things spiritually to to make sure that you don't succeed in anything you do and and it looks like it's december and their prophecy is coming to pass and and in spite of your your your, your casting of your bread on on the water in, in spite of your prayer and your fasting in in, in spite of your seriousness with spiritual things this is december and your life is almost like the same in january your life is almost the same like january and, and maybe even west off this is december 2020 and it, it, it looks like your your life still looks like 2010 your your life still looks like 2015 your, your life still looks like 2017 and you are angry you are disappointed things are moving from bad to worse and and you keep crying where is our god where is my god and that's your lamentation i understand i understand i i do I understand and God understands and in circumstances like this you have the human right to complain it is your right to complain it is your right to be bitter it is your right to be sad it is your right to be angry it is your right because you are only human how long can you sustain how long can you sustain the pressure you are only human but hear the voice of the Lord speaking through my voice to you as you listen to me you have to rise above your humanity and tap into your spirit dimensions because it is only your spirit that can handle your infirmities so you need to rise above your humanity and tap into your spirit dimensions so the psalmist was lamenting then all of a sudden there is a twist all of a sudden there is a twist his attention was drawn to the truth that i just shared with you namely rise above your humanity and tap into your spiritual dimensions and the psalmist does that so after lamenting he doesn't stay at lamentation there is a twist in his prayer and now he begins to praise god i trust in your unfailing love my heart rejoices in your salvation i will sing the lord's praise for he has been good to me it is not enough to stay at the mountain top of lamentations some of you have been at the mountain top of lamentations for too long it is time to cross over and begin to trust in god's unfailing love your heart should begin to rejoice in your very salvation because like i told you cast your bread on the waters and after many days you find it so you begin to sing the lord's praises because it's been good to you so you begin to have trust in god's mercy despite all of your problems your heart then begins to rejoice 
and you begin to sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully and wondrously with you. Now, don't you see that this is very interesting? This dude, he just finished lamenting. He began to lament. He, he lamented about all of his woes. He was asking God all sorts of questions. And all of a sudden, then I believe, all of a sudden, by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the conversation changed from regret to praise. You know, it is quite human for us to see everything that God has not done. So some of us say, Lord, I believed you at the beginning of the year for marriage. I believed you for health. I believed you for trouble. I believed you for breakthrough. I believed you for children. I believed you for employment. I believed you for favor. I believed you for graces. I believed you for a lot of things. Now it is December. No show. Lord, why? Lord, I thought you would have done this or that. Lord, why? In spite of all of this, like the psalmist, can, can, can you twist the narrative? Can you change it? And begin to say, I will rejoice. Can you begin to do that? You know, most of the times we concentrate a lot on what God has not done or what he did not do or what he promised he would do. Lord, we tell God, Lord, uh, I brought 12 issues, you did only 3. Lord, I brought 4 issues, you did only 1. Lord, I brought 15 issues, you did only 10. Lord, I brought 5 issues, you did only 4. Lord, if you are in heaven, why did this happen to me? Uh, are you not God? Are you not the covenant keeping God? Are you not the one who did this and that and that? Lord, why is all of this happening? And God said, it is because I'm alive. And I'm in heaven. Other than that, it could have been worse for you. It could have been worse. Oh, you think your case is worse? You think your case is worse? Go and ask Job. No human on earth has tasted the tragedy of Job. In one day, see what happened to that dude. And under those kind of dire circumstances, Job still said, though he slay me. Though he slay me. See, my dear friends, there are many people who carry a lot of burdens and you have no idea what people are going through. Because of the kind of work I do, I'm privy to a lot of things that people go through, things that they will ordinarily not tell you. I have access to those burdens. Some of you want to eat, money to feed, it's a headache. You have no idea how you are going back to school, how you are going to pay your rent. All over, the saying now is, no money. That's a new jargon. People are complaining about everything and everybody. Prices are hiking up. Relationships are breaking off. Workers are not being paid. Some are being laid off. All kinds of things happening in people's lives. Sorrow upon sorrow. Sorrow upon sorrow. And many of us are downcast and we are wondering if we are even going to make it to the next day. Or even if we will survive the coming year. But let me holler at you. Let me holler at you. I want you to sing. I want you to praise. I want you to dance unto the Lord. Because although the system looks like a disadvantage, God has dealt wondrously with us. God has been good or you will not be listening to me now. You know, one of the things I love to do as a sacrifice of offering is to visit the sick at the hospitals. I just pick the hospitals and I, I go. I ask permission and I go. There was this one time that I went to one of the hospitals here in GH, in the capital city. And there was this guy with a kidney issue. Um, and I got drawn to him, so I started to talk to him. We, we got a little friendly. And anytime I went there, I could see that he was in excruciating pain. But he would always reply to my greetings, saying, Man of God, Emoji, it could have been worse. But I thank God for my life. So I, I, I look at him and my heart goes out with love to him because in, in that excruciating pain, he would always respond to my greetings every single time. It could have been worse. But I thank God for my life. And, and I ask myself, ah, what could be worse than this? A man of God could have been worse. I thank God for my life. Sometimes the nurses would send me a test that He's not been able to sleep for two or three days. And in the middle of that, he's just praising God. He's singing praises. He's, he's worshipping. I mean, his pain and swelling. Can you imagine in that situation? Kidney failure. Do you know what that means? In that pain, hmm? he's just praising God. He's in bed, praising God in that condition. Then days later, 
Before I realized, I received an alert from his phone saying, Man of God, I sent you something to buy credits for the online work you are doing. Your voice every morning brings me hope. Don't stop this online thing. You have no idea the lives God is using you to touch. Then, immediately I see his alert. I'll return the money back to him. And I'll call him and tell him, ah, Are you crazy? You need money more than me. Why are you even sending me money? We are trying hard to get funds for you so that you can do your dialysis and you are here sending me money for credit. You know, I'm even taking part of the cost of your dialysis and you are sending me money for credit. You the crazy? And then he will return the money back to my phone and we'll go back and forth, back and forth. God rest his soul. He died. I was called that he was in a critical condition and I rushed to the hospital to see him. He could hardly speak. He was going. I knew it. His time here was up and I could feel it. He beckoned me to draw closer and I sent my ear to his lips and he whispered faintly with all the strength he could gather into my ear. And these were his last words. God has been good to me. I thank God for your life. I will watch over you and everybody I care about from heaven. Man of God, keep being you. You are a gift to the world. Now I'm going home. Always make sure you give thanks were his last words. Still holding his hands, he passed into eternity. Now I'll put it to you. Can you still praise God in your situation? Can you? Let's pray. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit lips that openly profess his name. So today, I would like you to thank God for your extended and entire family and for the gifts of friends. I want you to thank God for the gifts of your larger family and for the gifts of friends. And if there are specific issues or situations in your family line, begin to thank God for taking care of them already. Like I said, this is a faith walk. You have not yet seen the results, but in faith, you are thanking God for the results before they manifest in the physical dimensions. Remember, just give thanks. No asking. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, creator of all and source of all goodness and love, please look kindly upon us and receive our heartfelt gratitude in this time of giving thanks. We thank you for all the graces and blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the spiritual and the temporal. We thank you for our faith and religious heritage. And we thank you for the provision of food and shelter. We thank you for our health. We thank you for the love that we have for one another. We thank you for our family and we thank you for our friends. Dear Father, in your infinite generosity, we thank you for the continued graces and blessings that you have already granted us as far as this year and the coming year is concerned. In the name of Jesus, your son and our brother, we make this prayer. Amen. Remember, just give thanks. No asking. Have a prayerful day. Shalom and God bless you. Thank you.